we'll start first of all with uh, the perspective on, on this project, as I mentioned, down in Williamsburg. Uh, the DOE grant is coming in essentially for nutrient mitigation. Mm -hmm. uh, is algae promising, especially promising in your mind? Well, I think certainly algae is one of the ways uh, that um, could be environmentally benign and uh, result in a product that can have other uses as well. Um, so I, I certainly think some of the innovative projects coming along uh, using algae has these dual benefits or triple benefits, uh, including the one that's going on in the uh, College of William and Mary, uh, along with their collaborators. Um, and I think uh, for us, the, the DOE's focus has always been on delivering uh, energy security um, and energy independence. And so for us, the end use uh, is the one that we've typically uh, focused on. But certainly, I think you're starting to see in this space a lot of um, entrepreneurs and, and technology providers who are thinking beyond just uh, looking at a stable supply of uh, domestically grown fuel. Uh, what you're looking at is also to do it in the most responsible way possible. Um, and I think, you know, uh, for algae at least, there's a lot of new insights that's come along uh, since uh, we first started looking at it in the 70s. Um, and I think uh, it's, it's, it's been a real renaissance, certainly. So. Is it a must in your mind, Joyce, that a project like this or you know, any, any of the so-called public projects have this combination of private financing, in this case from Statoil, and public financing as well, that you need a, a dichotomy of support in order to get a broader range of, of goals and successes? Absolutely, absolutely. We see that the, uh, the fuel products certainly, um, and the scale at which it needs to occur, um, we need to have the engagements from all parties, uh, from the environmental groups, uh, from the government, uh, federal agencies, um, as well as the private corporations. And so um, you really need that triumvirate um, to work together with our universities to deliver the best solutions possible. Uh, when I mentioned soul design, you're clearly well versed in what's going yes. on there. Uh, do you have a feel for what's going to be a better product that is naturally occurring algae or a synthetic product that requires such, uh, I don't know if it's more energy intensive, but uh, more carefully crafted approach to actually building this? Well, that, that's a great question. And I think, in, especially in the algal biofuels industry, uh, right now, um, we are staying as technology neutral and agnostic as possible. I think this is, is, this is a very exciting period because you're going to see a lot of technologies being tried out in these health scion days. Um, and I think um, the best we can do is to make sure that we give equal opportunities to, to everyone. Um, and I certainly think that there are um, uh, strategic benefits for doing different things different ways. And uh, certainly some of the more innovative projects you've seen come along, I think this is just the beginning, really, uh, of exploring different ways um, of how technologies can come together uh, and create better solutions uh, in the end. And especially with the team at, at um, William & Mary, you've seen a, a perfect storm of things. You have, they have physicists on their teams. They have um, biologists on their teams. They have technology providers and engineers. Um, and also blending in the awareness of the ecology. Um, and so I, I think you're going to see a lot of that uh, in the coming days for, for biofuels, for algae, uh, and as well as other clean tech um, sectors. Is the biggest drawback here energy intensity, what it takes to convert this into fuel? Yes, uh, energy intensity is definitely one of the issues uh, for um, algal biofuels. Other things include um, robust production systems, and I think you're going to see a lot of different ways uh, to achieve that productivity that we're going to need. Mm -hmm. um, and really um, getting the cost and the projections of technology improvements uh, that can contribute to lowering that cost. Um, those are all of the things that are critical to come together before an industry will, will take off. Um, and our role uh, in the government agency is to um, pair up the best science and the best engineering to deliver these solutions. One of the aspects that seems to be most curious here is if you go with a saltwater solution, saltwater base, mm -hmm. and you take this into the sea, it's one of the harshest environments it would seem for any kind of man-made product. Hmm, that, that's, that's interesting because um, the earth, as you know, is 70% seawater or water 
in general. Uh, and algae tend to thrive in these environments. And so uh, there's growing recognition that uh, seawater um, that gave us life in the first place uh, may be where we turn to, to to look for solutions. And um, with algae, there's a potential to use a variety of water resources, including seawater, wastewater, um, produced water even, um, that, that come from oil and gas industries. Uh, and to leverage those resources that we couldn't use for the traditional agriculture uh, and to bend them uh, to algae production.